Are you getting close to graduation and trying to decide whether to apply to grad school or go out into the real world and get some experience under your belt? One of the hardest and most exciting things that you're gonna have to do is decide what you're gonna do with your life. With so many career options and so much uncertainty about the future, there is a lot of pressure to make the right choice. The pressure is made even worse by the fact that once you've made this decision, it's gonna be incredibly hard to reverse, which is one reason why choosing a career path makes students so anxious. But we're gonna change that today with some solid strategies on how to navigate this critical juncture of your life. This is Hands-Free Coaching with Brainscape. I'm Thea Beckman, your learning coach. And in this series, I read to you popular articles from the Brainscape Academy. And this one is about how to choose a career path that will really work for you. The first strategy is to see your career as a set of stepping stones and not a linear path. One of the best things you can do right at the outset of this introspection is to understand that most people change their career many times, about 12 times before you're 40 on average. In other words, there's a lot less pressure to choose a career path and commit to it for life. This means that you don't need to choose the perfect forever career for you right now. Although if you know what that is, by all means, go for it. Instead, embrace the trial and error nature of life and explore career fields that excite you and in which you see a future. The fact that you can redirect your career path at any point also means that one of the best things you can do is to learn how to learn. The most successful people are those who are adaptable and flexible, quick learners. Mastering the most effective study habits may be one of the best things you can do for yourself, regardless of what career path you end up taking. The second strategy is to think about what excites and energizes you. This one's a first obvious step. And wouldn't it be great if you could just do what you love? Sometimes we're lucky enough to make our passion into our career. Some people are fascinated by the natural environment and so they become geologists or earth scientists. Others by the law and so they become lawyers. Others are crazy about metal art and so they become welders. What do you love to do? Find the thing that makes you tick and see if and how it's possible to transform that into a career for yourself. The third strategy is to look to your talents for clues. So you've got a good idea of what excites and energizes you, but what if the thing you're good at doesn't really make sense for a career? For example, I love and am good at bird watching, but does that mean I should become a professional bird watcher? Well, aside from the fact that there isn't really such a thing, even I'd get tired of bird watching if I had to do it eight hours a day. Sometimes it's better to let your hobbies stay hobbies. However, while your passions might not immediately translate into awesome career paths, they will point you in the right direction. For starters, they'll tell you what interests you, the environments you like to be in, and the unique skills you have that could transfer to your professional life. So what are you good at? Are you a talented photographer? Are you dexterous with numbers and statistics? Can you write arresting prose? Or are you incredibly handy with a tool set? Use these interests and skills to guide your career direction and you will find that what you choose will ultimately satisfy you. The fourth strategy is to take a career test. Sometimes it's super hard to honestly assess what we're good at, what we like and what matters most to us. So if you find yourself stuck, take a test. You'll find a ton of free and paid career tests on the World Wide Web. Your school and college should have plenty of them too. Just remember that while these tests tend to pigeonhole people into a set of categories, their value lies in helping you better understand your strengths, interests, and aptitude rather than explicitly telling you what you should do with your life. I remember taking a career test when I was in high school and it told me I should be a ballerina. Go figure. Strategy number five, try an internship. If you have some flexibility to take a bit of a lower salary, consider an internship. These are like job trials and can be a great way to test out an industry or type of career. They could even lead to a full-time job, but at the very least, they'll give you the opportunity to build a network of industry professionals, one of which may become your next boss or mentor. Strategy number six, talk to other people about their careers. Perhaps the best way to figure out how to choose a career path is to ask other people about theirs. People love talking about themselves and are usually happy to give advice. You can ask people you know well, like your family or professional acquaintances in a field you're interested in, or you can reach out to people you don't know through social media, like LinkedIn, or even directly in a cold email. Yeah, it can be intimidating, but people are usually pretty receptive to giving their advice if they understand you don't have an agenda and aren't asking them for money. Strategy number seven, 
find a mentor. This is a step up from just asking any old person about how they chose their career path. Mentors allow you to benefit from learned experience, wisdom, and insights of someone who has walked the path you want to walk, taking your career to the next level and keeping you on the right path. If there's a career you're interested in, call around to see if anyone in that line of work would let you shadow them for a few days so that you can get a feel for what it's really like. Even if that means you have to play coffee bitch for the privilege. Again, you'll find that companies are perhaps surprisingly very open to this. Strategy number eight, explore unconventional careers. We all know the popular careers available to us. Doctor, lawyer, teacher, computer engineer, police officer, store owner, etc. These are great for lots of people, but if you feel uninspired by the typical choices, know that there are thousands of unusual jobs you might not have heard about, hidden perhaps in the Bureau of Labor Statistics Occupational Handbook. Mashable.com has a list of six dream jobs that pay well, like panda caretaker, chocolate inspector, sex toy tester, surfer, travel blog writer, you name it, there's a job for it. The world is your oyster, and if you wanted, you can turn shucking them into a career path for yourself. Our final strategy is to design a career plan. As with most things, setting down some concrete goals and a detailed plan to get from where you are to where you want to be is the best way to progress. Maybe you're currently working as a writer, but ultimately want to be the managing editor of a nature magazine. How do you make the transition? You plan it. Map out where you want to go with concrete milestones. It doesn't matter that you might change your mind or that very likely your detailed plan won't well, go according to plan. But plan it anyways. It will lay down that career path for you to follow, which will allow you to build momentum, preventing you from getting stuck. Your plans won't be set in stone and that's okay. Your career is a marathon, not a sprint, and it can turn out to be a very winding road. That's just life, my friend. But don't let your indecision keep you from starting.